the single player mode in StarCraft 2 is awesome. They changed it from the first one, but we'll talk about that in, we'll talk about that in a minute. First we have a briefing. The rooftops of Doc Smog. Now that you've made it off the wolf room and disposed of that soiled uniform, I did what to my uniform? I mean, there's a bunch of Nazis crawling around on a boat and I'm stuck down in the cargo hold all by myself with just a silenced pistol, but that's nothing to be scared of. I mean, I totally wasted that entire ship's worth of dudes. I Maybe there wasn't a bathroom. Did we see a bathroom on the ship? That might be why I soiled. All right, locate the weapons we clandestinely shipped as part of the cargo. After that, find the facility's deployment timetable. We want to know what's going in and out, and it's usually in the harbor master's office. Disrupt the shipyard. Blow up at least one of the cargo trucks with your demo charges. Let's see. Be careful. The dock workers here are a rough and salty. Have a rough and salty reputation. They don't take kindly to strangers. Try to engage them from afar with your sniper rifle. That is terrible advice, by the way, in this level. It's so difficult to snipe everybody. Let's see. The front of the U-boat production facility is crawling with guards, so that's why we're sending you in the back way. I don't think I would have a problem with a whole bunch of guards. I've proven myself rather capable. You may have to engage in some acrobatic jumping and even a little tightrope walking to get from one building to another, but it shouldn't be anything you can't handle. Being a former pilot, you're not afraid of heights, are you? I'm not afraid of heights. When there's a plane underneath me... Jeez. So yeah, in the fir original StarCraft, the single-player campaign was essentially a tutorial. Oh, look at this. Locate smuggled weapons. Oh, smuggled weapons found. I get what they were trying to do with that, but that's still kind of funny. It's like, you have to go find the smuggled weapons that we... S Wait. Who? What? What? Who? When? There you are. Watch me snipe you from afar. German helmets, man. They ought to make tanks out of that stuff. You wouldn't be able to destroy the tank ever. Alright, let us... I know kind of where I need to go in this level. This level is always a maze. And it's always a pain trying to find that one spot. Boom! Yeah, you see how well sniping works in this level? These guys are always, like, right next to you. And, uh, there's usually not... I mean, this is a very nice long walkway here. You usually don't have that kind of prep time in the sniping. Oh, there's a truck. We should probably bomb it to death. Ah, uh, hello, dude. Alright, well, let's try and not get the helmet. Ah! Don't walk to the side. I need to kill you. And the medicinal canteen and the deployment timetable schedule has already been picked up. And, huh, it didn't work this time. Maybe I, Oh, that's right, I haven't done it yet. Keep in mind that there's nobody over here. And uh, that's because that guy doesn't show up until I touch this throbbing red box. Now, suddenly... Get out of my way. All right. See? Okay, he's dead. There we go. Two of them show up. And it's always a pain trying to... I'm showing you what it's like. They tell you to try and snipe them. Sniping doesn't work too well. But I think... Hand grip... Yep, there we go. Now I've got a pistol. And you know what that means. Everybody's dead when I have a pistol. Although this one's not silenced. And there's very little ammo for you. I don't quite grasp why the uh, why you don't get to carry over your ammo from the last level because I had 80 some shots worth of ammo left in that uh, pistol. But oh well. All right, there should be. Yep, there you are. Oh, I got him in the arm. That's not cool. Four bullets to take down a dude. Boy, vey. There we go. Okay. Now that I'm up here, I suppose I'll snipe. Ugh. Alright, let's try this a little bit better. There you are. Oh, don't, no, don't drop to the ground. That makes me waste bullets. Jeez, don't you know anything? 
Someone is yelling that they noticed me, but I don't know where they are. And actually, you know what's really crappy? You can't look around very well with the sniper rifle. Uh, there's You have to hold down the aim button in order to take a look around where you are. Look around you. And uh, if you're with the sniper rifle, that automatically causes you to zoom in. There you are. Stop shooting me. Thank you. Thank you for complying. Alright, whoa. There you are. Oh, you just missed. That's the headshot I was looking for. This is not the headshot you were looking for. Now, how do I get back out of here? There's got to be a ladder somewhere. There's one. Let's just double check real quick, make sure that we killed everybody. Yep, because this is a dead end. So, the StarCraft 1 single player game was essentially just a giant um, tutorial level. And in the second one, what they would do is they wouldn't let you build all the units that you could let in multiplayer. So, for example, I mean, in multiplayer, you have full access to all of the units and all of the buildings, whereas in single player, they start you out only able to build marines. And uh, so you can only build, like, a command center, a barracks, marines, and that's it. Well, supply depots. In this one, however, they do the same thing, except they add a lot of other features that are only available in the single player mode to make it worth playing past being a tutorial. For example, I mean, they, they keep the whole you can only build one type of unit in each level and what have you, but now they give you a choice of what levels you can play next after you get out of the very first few that just set up the storyline. Um, somewhere, there's the ladder, I knew you were here somewhere. Uh, you get a choice of which mission you want to play. There's a dude. Ah, no! I'm wasting all of my pistol ammo. That was terrible. Okay. How did you do that? Secret Nazi techniques. Ugh, what was I talking about? Okay. When you beat certain missions, you get credits. And then you use those credits to buy... Um, upgrades for your units. For example, in the normal multiplayer game, um, in the barracks tech lab add-on, you can research combat shields for your marines. In the single player game, you can buy the combat shields upgrade, and then every time you start a mission, you automatically get that combat shields upgrade. You don't have to, you know, research it again and again at the tech lab, which is cool. I like that. They also have, um, I mean, you can buy all kinds of upgrades for your units, and then again for your... Ah, wonky! My bullet, I don't know if you could see that, but my bullet flew uh, where it didn't belong. I was aiming at the one guy, and then the bullet flew up and into the wall, like there was a strong magnetic field pulling it off course. Um, you can buy the bunker upgrades... Ah! Stop shooting me, please! Thank you. You might be wondering why I'm shooting so much and not going for the headshots there. There I was just unloading the bullets into him. Because I missed that guy earlier so many times, I'm trying to increase my hit percentage by shooting a lot of bullets into the guy and hitting him. This is not going to be good. Alright. Once we lay this bomb, two dudes with submachine guns come running out. One more for good measure. Yay! Okay, I am in desperate need of health. Luckily, there should be health up ahead. Once I find the ladder again. This, this should be back here. Yeah, this is the dead end with the ladder. And there should be a guy right when I get up off the top of the ladder. And he's dead in one. And I believe... Yep, there's another guy right here. And he's dead in one. Sweet! That worked out well. So in addition to buying uh, upgrades with your credits, upgrades that both exist in the multiplayer game and do not, there's also units that exist in the single player game that do not exist in the multiplayer. Um, fire bats, for example, were taken out of the game and replaced by marauders and hellions. 
But in the single player campaign, there are fire bats, which is cool. Head down into the building, and this should be a three star. Um, then there's research. Like, I was fighting the Zerg. Yay! 76% accuracy. I think you need to get up above 75% accuracy in order to get three stars. There's an accuracy requirement. 32 headshots for Skull Monkey. Um, when I was fighting the Zerg, I could get Chrysalis. There were, I, I guess, Chrysalae would be the um, plural. And each of them gave me one Zerg research point. And then I took them back to the lab, and the guy in the lab, like, he would find spore crawler DNA inside the Zerg Chrysalis that I brought back. And then he would, you could use that to develop, they give you a choice between two upgrades. And then each, the Zerg and the Protoss uh, research points each have like five levels. And the first level, I had a choice. Use Spore Crawler DNA to develop automatic turrets that sit on top of my bunkers, or use Ultralisk DNA to give my bunkers 150 extra hit points. You can only use one or the other at each of the levels. But then like at 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 research points, there's another set of awesome upgrades that don't exist in the single player campaign mode, uh, the multiplayer mode. I'm talking too much about StarCraft instead of uh, this game, but there you go. The rooftops of Doxmog. Bye-bye.